Now, English grammar is easy. OK, that might be a slight exaggeration, but it's not as hard as many people think. In the UK, for instance, we don't teach children tenses. They learn them intuitively. The only people who really study tenses are linguists and language teachers. But while it's possible to master tenses using only your intuition, having an understanding of how they work can accelerate your learning and increase your confidence. Most people learning English as a second language are taught tenses one by one, and it can seem like a torturous and infinitely complex task, with hundreds of rules and exceptions. But if we look at all the tenses at the same time, a relationship between them emerges that can make them much easier to remember and use. So, this is the first of three short videos on tenses, and in this one I'm going to focus primarily on how to remember all the structures as a group, and in the other videos I'm going to concentrate more on how to use them. Right, here goes. Perhaps you can remember the names of some of the tenses from English lessons at school. Brian is in the kitchen. The word is is a present form of the verb to be, and Brian is in the kitchen is a sentence in the present simple. I do, I am, I work, etc. Brian was in the kitchen is exactly the same, but it's talking about the past. Brian was in the kitchen yesterday. This tense is called the simple past. Simple. And in the same way, Brian will be in the kitchen tomorrow is called the future simple. So we have the present, the past and the future. Now, there are some other present tenses as well, like the present continuous. I am doing. Brian is making dinner. It's something that's happening right now, but there'll be better explanations of how to use each tense in the next two videos. The tense that people seem to hate the most is the present perfect, I have done. Brian has made a cake. But I read in an old grammar book that people used to call the present perfect, the present perfect simple. Nobody calls it that anymore, but the old name can help you guess the name of the last present tense. We've got the present simple, the present continuous, the present perfect simple, and the last one is present perfect continuous. The present perfect continuous is made up of all the elements of the present continuous and all the elements of the present perfect. So we need a subject plus have plus be as the past participle and then the verb we want to use in the ing form. I have been doing. I have been running. I'm out of breath. Okay, that may not sound incredibly simple so far, but let's look at the past tenses. We've got the simple past, I did. Brian was in the kitchen, remember? And you might have heard people saying, I was doing. It's like I am doing, but in the past, and it's called the past continuous. Now there are two more past tenses, and they're easy to guess because the four past tenses are the same as the four present tenses. Simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. So the next tense is the past perfect, I had done. And lastly, there's the past perfect continuous, I had been doing. The past tenses don't just have the same names as the present tenses, they have all the same elements as well. The only difference is that the first verb in each structure is moved from the present to the past. Everything else stays the same. I do becomes I did. I am doing becomes I was doing. With I have done, the only thing that changes is the verb have, and it becomes I had done. And it's the same for the past perfect continuous. I have been doing becomes I had been doing. Now we use various forms to talk about the future. I'm going to look at them more in more detail in a future video. For this video, I just want to look at the future using will. The future is made up of exactly the same structures we have for the present and the past. Simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. But to conjugate them, we use will followed by the infinitive of the first verb in the structure and everything else is exactly the same. So the future simple is I will do. Then we've got the future continuous, I will be doing, just like the present continuous, but with will be instead of am. The future perfect is I will have done. The future perfect continuous is I will have been doing. And that's it. There are all kinds of other grammatical structures that we use, like questions, negatives, conditionals, passives, and other future forms. But they're all made up from elements of these tenses. So let's just recap. There are 12 tenses, four of them are present, 
four of them are past, four of them are future. They all use the same structures, simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. The two continuous structures always use be plus the verb in its ing form. The perfect tenses always use have plus a past participle. To move these structures from the present to past and future, all you have to do is conjugate the first verb. Do becomes did and will do. Am becomes was and will be. And have becomes had and will have. So, rather than learning each tense separately, we can see that there's a simple connection between them all and they're much easier to conjugate than we imagine. So as soon as this video finishes, try saying what you can remember.